Are you thinking of purchasing a home? Are you wondering what the process is and what are the important questions to ask if you are thinking of uh, purchasing a home? Well, let's explore all of that together. My name is Roxanne Govari with Pemberley Realty here in San Diego, California. And uh, I am very happy to actually talk about uh, this subject with you. And hopefully we can uh, clear up some of the questions that uh, come up about the home buying process. So uh, well, some of the I've actually gathered some of the questions that I thought that uh, might come up uh, uh, in the process for you. What is the first step to uh, buying a home? Well, the first step to buying a home is actually to get uh, uh, pre-approved. Basically, if you don't know how much house you can afford, then you really cannot uh, move forward any further. So the very first step to do is to actually get with a loan officer and, uh, and, and, and then find out how much house you can afford. What is your budget? How much is how much monthly payment can you afford and, uh, and how much house can you afford? Now, what's the difference between a, a real estate agent and a loan officer? A loan officer actually works to get you uh, qualified for a loan and actually uh, find a, a bank for you that is going to lend you money in order for you to buy a house. A real estate agent is the person that actually helps you with the process of finding a home, uh, uh, negotiating the deal, finding out that the home is safe and sound, and then get you into the house with the help of the loan officer. So these, uh, there are two separate people and they usually work together and uh, they, the, with their help together, you get into a house. Um, so um, sometimes you may have a house already and you are thinking of purchasing another one. Another one. Maybe you are living in a smaller uh, place and you're trying to uh, go into a bigger place. Maybe you're in a condo and you're trying to get a house. Maybe you're in a bigger house and you're trying to downsize into a smaller house. Whatever the case may be, uh, that process becomes a little bit more um, I, more complicated because you have to figure out, okay, how do I do this? How do I play this mutual um, musical chair and and come out ahead of uh, ahead of the process? So um, in a case like that, you have many choices. Um, if you have equity in the place that you're in, then you are in luck. What you can do is um, you can sell this place. And then pull out of your equity, get uh, get into a rental situation, or stay with family while you are looking for another place to buy. That's one option. Another option is if you have the income, you can go ahead and and qualify for a loan and go ahead and buy something else, and then and then secure the uh, the new place, and then turn around and sell your uh, old place and and pay pay the difference and um, and come up with a lower down pay, a lower payment per month and uh, and then then you are done um, or you um, you may decide that okay the uh, let's say you are moving from a smaller place to a bigger place you can you can um, go ahead and let's say you uh, you are making enough money to actually move into a bigger place. Then you can rent out your uh, smaller place to somebody and collect rental payments and then uh, move to a bigger place and live happily ever after at the new place. So choices, choices when you have another property and you're trying to get into another place, you have many choices and it's usually uh, you are in a better um Better, better financial situation. Now, home inspections. Home inspections are almost always good to uh, good to do and good to take because uh, doing a home inspection actually helps you uh, figure out what's uh, what's wrong with the place. What are the uh, sh what are the um, things that you have to worry about? What are the things that you have to do repairs? First, or uh, or if you're trying to negotiate with the seller and trying to get some credit for something that's wrong with the property, in order for you to find what what's wrong, you have to do a home inspection and then try to renegotiate with the seller if the if the market allows. Sometimes when when the market is uh, super hot and there is not enough houses to go around, uh, then you basically have to you still have to do a home inspection so that you can see what you get yourself into 
But then beyond that, um, uh, you uh, basically have to um, uh, have to take it on upon yourself to do the uh, to do the repairs because there may be two, three, five other people lined up waiting for you to let go of that house so that you, they can quickly take your uh, place. Um, what about a final walkthrough? What is a final, final walkthrough? So when you go under contract to buy a place, um, usually you are, um, you go through a, a period of, of, uh, of doing investigations and, uh, you know, getting a loan and, uh, and, uh, and that is the escrow period towards the end of your escrow period. You want to do a final walkthrough before you close on the transaction. And you want to make sure that the property is in the same shape as you found it when you first saw it. So that uh, you make sure that the seller didn't walk away with the kitchen sink or there's no broken windows in between. Or, um, you know, um, let's uh, let's say that you like a, uh, a chandelier in the place and, and you really want to uh, buy the house with the chandelier. You want to make sure that the seller did not take away the chandelier right before you close on the transaction. So that is the final walkthrough. That is why you do that. But just remember that final walkthrough is just a just a basically a courtesy to make sure that the that the house is still standing. It's it does not usually give you the chance to walk away uh, or try to cancel the contract. Now let's talk about earnest money deposit. So um, I should put the disclaimer in there for you that all the information that I'm giving you is information that I'm giving you that is current for the California uh, uh, rules and regulations. I am not familiar with any other states and how they operate. I can only speak to California and even more in particular, I can only uh, speak to the county of San Diego where I sell real estate and when I practice real, where I practice real estate and that's what I know and I'm familiar with. I have many, many colleagues all around the country and they are experts in their own uh, local area. I'm happy to uh, put you in touch with those experts if you are thinking of buying or selling in other uh, parts of the country. So in that case, please still reach out to me and I am happy to um, help you. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put you uh, put my phone number in there so that you you can reach out to me. Um, but but what I'm talking to you today is only pertaining to the uh, to the California market, nowhere other than California market. So let's go back to how does earnest money deposit work? So when you go under contract in order to in order to purchase a property, um, you have to put an earnest money deposit down. Earnest money deposit usually is between one and three percent of the purchase price. So let's say that you are trying to purchase a property for five hundred thousand, and so three percent of the three uh, percent of that would be fifteen thousand dollars that you're putting down into an escrow account, and and that money does not go to the seller. That money is your money sitting in an escrow account, and um, at least in California. If you decide to cancel that contract for whatever reason, your um, appraisal doesn't come in, your loan doesn't go through, your, you don't like the condition of the property and you want to cancel and move on to something else, that earnest money gets returned to you if you have not removed any of your contingencies yet. So that being the case, it's important to not get scared, uh, go on the contract, put your earnest money deposit into an escrow account so that you can you can basically be on your way to close that transaction and become a proud homeowner. Now, you may ask, okay, how many houses should I view before purchasing one? Well, that's a very good question. And you know, I've had I've had buyers that we looked at the very first home and it was the perfect home. And they sometimes Sometimes you know that and you uh, jump right on it. Sometimes you unfortunately don't know that and you lose that first opportunity and then you just can't get it back for another hundred homes that you look at. So um, it's always a good, a good idea to get with your realtor, 
get into get into a situation where you're looking at many properties and and you are you know exactly what it is that you're looking for and with the help of your realtor you um you basically pick the right property and then you make an offer for that property so um so how many houses do you look at it all depends on you what your preference is and how well you have communicated with your realtor to pick the right property pick the right area and uh and uh you know uh help you choose the best house that's suited for you so what happens if i uh, decide to back out from buying a home well if you decide to back out from uh, buying a home as long as you have not removed your contingencies like we talked about you can back out and you can get your deposit money back but there is two bucks to that one is physical inspection and two is appraisal remember when you are buying a house you really need to inspect the property and make sure that the property is sound safe and sound that money is usually spent on on a service provider that comes and provides a service and inspects the property for you that money you cannot get back because you pay for a service they performed the service therefore um you know whatever their fees were that you paid it's gone same goes for an appraisal when you get the property under contract and you are um, you are going to get a loan then your lender is going to hire an appraiser to come and take a look at the place and and certify that the money that they're lending you uh, is good that the property is worth the money that they are lending to you that is also a service that that um, the appraiser provides to the lender and to the buyer therefore since it, well, there was a service that was provided that uh, money is gone you cannot get it back beyond these two costs your earnest money deposit is always yours to get back if you decide you change your mind and you want to you want to go ahead and uh, uh, and cancel that contract as long as you are doing that before the removal of your contingencies your money is safe and you can get it back okay and what is a mortgage and how does it work a mortgage is money that a lender a bank is giving you in exchange for you making a monthly payment plus interest to them for however period of time that you determine together you can have a 30-year fixed mortgage you can have a 15-year fixed mortgage you can have a five uh five um five-year arm basically a, a 30 year fixed mortgage means that for 30 years you pay the same amount of money every month your payment does not change and by the time of, by the end of your 30 years you paid off the whole loan same for a 15 year fixed rate mortgage for 15 years you make a payment every month and uh that's that's principal and interest and by the end of the 15th year you have paid that mortgage off and the house becomes yours a five-year arm means that for five years your payment is the same and then after that you uh, either have to refinance it into an, into another fixed year rate mortgage or you have to refinance after five years and uh, change your rate or change your monthly payment on that loan okay and then um an escrow i was talking to uh, one of my clients just moved from San Diego to Illinois and um, I was talking to the realtor that is helping him buy the house in Illinois and I was and she was saying when do we get the um, uh, when does he get the money and I was saying well he's going to get the money uh, the day after closing and she was saying but that's very strange in here in Illinois he we the buyer and the seller the buyer pays the money the same day and the seller gets the money the same day and I said well that's very interesting because that's not how we do it in California our our method of closing a transaction is passive meaning that the buyer and seller never meet they uh, do it via doing paperwork whereas 
and, and that is not the way that it's done on the East Coast or apparently in Illinois, where they get together um, uh, and, and closing is actually in person. Buyer and seller get together and they shake hands and, and they exchange the money and everybody uh, is actually doing everything at around a table that is a live closing. That is not how we do it in California. As a matter of fact, the Illinois agent was asking me, how long has your process been like this? Is this something new? And I said, no, I've been in the business for 25 years and this is how we've always done it. So uh, states all do their own thing and they do it differently. So in our state, what we do is we, we do it through paperwork and through notaries and buyer and seller never actually meet in person to exchange the title and the money between each other. There you have it. That is the process of buying a house. And uh, and thank you so much for joining me today uh, for this uh, session of, uh, of Roxanne Govari's Real Estate. And if you are thinking of buying or selling in San Diego or anywhere in the country, please let me know. And, um, and if you are trying to uh, reach out to me, there's my phone number. And if you are uh, trying to email me, there's my email address. And uh, my website is at roxangovari.com. I am very active on Instagram. Would love to connect with you there. There's my Instagram handle. And of course, Facebook as well is one of the places that I hang out. And if you happen to watch this video on YouTube, I would really appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel in uh, I make it my mission to uh, to educate um, my viewers about real estate everything real estate related and uh, so if you subscribe to my channel that will uh, help me boost my uh, viewership and I really appreciate it and have a great evening